Yeah. yeah. The Salpetriere is still the main neurological hospital in France, and the early history of neurology is lovingly conserved there in the Charcot Library. Yeah. The books have a sweet, old, sweet smell. Okay. Yeah. And, um, well, you're, you're, you're getting very close to your original description. Oops. Because that's well. right. You're, you're s no, right here. Well, 18, 1885. Well, you led me, practically. Yeah, well, come. <laughs> you, you smelt it out. I smelt it out. Oh, you did. That's one way to do it. That's right. <laughs> Here's the first paper by Gilles Latourette. <laughs> it's a study of a nervous affection characterized by motor incoordination accompanied by echolalia. Echolalia is an automatic reproduction of people's words or sounds. Echolalia. 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 Echo. 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 Fuck. No. Really? This is Latourette's personal description of seven chains. Seven, seven chains? <laughs> and there he is over there in the apron. No, oh, there, there he is. There he is. There's Tourette, eh? Look at him, see his fist? He's got his... Uh, at this time, neurology oh. and psychology is extremely popular. I mean, this is where the action was. Incredible. I know. Here, the master an impresario, Charcot. He's at the height of his fame here in the, in the mid-1880s, and he is demonstrating a hysteric going through what he called grand hysteria to, uh, to a, a group of people who probably include writers and theater people. Yeah. I mean, everyone came to sort of Charcot's theater. Like a circus. And uh, had something circus-like. And, uh, and maybe the only other neurologist here may be, in fact, his young assistant, Tourette. And he, he just put things together. I mean, the alphabet of neurology, the foundations of neurology, were largely laid right here. They're observers. They're observing. Or the onlookers and... Uh, um this is a, a woman almost, she seems to be surrendering. Surrendering or, you know, uh, <laughs> you know swooning. Uh, well, right now I'm being observed, am I not, you know? I, I'm not being vivisected, I'm being <laughs> sort of mentally dissected. But, I mean, this is a casual thing. I mean, Francis Oliver's my friend first, and, and, uh, and, he, and he, doesn't, he doesn't administer therapy to me. He's not literally speaking my doctor. I'm not a patient of his. On the other hand, I, I am, in, in a more abstract way, a patient because he, while he's my friend, he also studies and he, he necessarily observes. For 40 or 50 years, until 1960, Tourette's was seen as a psychiatric disturbance, which could be understood and perhaps treated by psychoanalysis. In 1960, it was found that if one used the drug Haldol, which had been invented as a tranquilizer, but in tiny doses, a tenth, even a hundredth of the tranquilizing dose, uh, it might specifically alter, alter Tourette syndrome and damp it down. Uh, and with this notion came the thought that Tourette's is, is a neurochemical disorder. The harsh, the harsh. Uh, by neurochemical, I just mean an abnormality or a condition in the chemistry of the nervous system, in particular with some of its neurotransmitters. It seems probable that dopamine, which is a, a major motor transmitter and one which is diminished in Parkinson's disease, is increased or, or overreacted to in Tourette syndrome. But then simplification has probably gone too far in this direction. Even if one can damp it down completely with, with a chemical, you know, one, one cannot explain the particular forms of Tourette's uh, in terms of a, a simple chemical explanation. I think you may need a, a much more complex explanation and one in which biological determinants and personal and cultural determinants come together. I mean, finally, Tourette's is a very complex construct which is unique in each person. It was only when I written about this that I later heard. Um, you see, now, for example, you know, the pulling of my ear is, <laughs> cannot be explained in terms of neurochemistry.
förlåt mig. No, you can say, it, <laughs> say it pisses them off. <laughs> Put it in lay terms. I mean, it, has to, it has to do with, with, with the salience of my ear and who knows the no, symbolism tactile. of the ear. Tactile. Yeah, but, but why my ear and not my nose? Well, why not your nose? Uh, yeah, uh, but, but, who knows? But, but, uh, no, <laughs> but in fact it was my ear. Yes. It was my ear. Anyway. <laughs> but I, I just... Uh, no, no, I'm serious. <laughs> mm, it's salty. Well, Tourette's is impulse. And, um, uh, you know, and every sort of impulse, sexual impulse, aggressive impulse, um, is, tends to be heightened and, uh, uh, or, 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 or less inhibited. Oh, sure, cool. really... what did say? One of Shane's impulses is to touch. Mm. Feels damp, but... This is both a kind of tactile curiosity and a playful testing of the limits of the forbidden. I feel it, feel it. Yes. Don't touch. As a book lover, I feared for Charcot's precious it. volumes. I spilled some coffee on it in, 18 so? in 1860. That's right. With, uh, there was no sugar in it. Yet I knew Shane would do them no harm. Uh, a little bit of milk. Um, so let's, go ahead, some let's go ahead and look at something. can identify with Shane's compulsion to touch the forbidden. As children, we often felt it ourselves. But in Shane's case, this compulsion is of a different order. It is an aspect of his condition, and he has to struggle with himself to suppress it. Unusual thing, almost like plastic. Actually, some, some things that touch titillate me, you know? Some objects and some things. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you're seeing with your hand, aren't you? The hand becomes such a sense organ. And I think when you touch it, it's the feeling eye and the seeing hand. You feel like little toes. Yeah. You know, little baby toes. Yeah. <laughs> they do indeed. <laughs> um, yeah. I am a little worried sometimes that he may endanger himself, that he will sort of run out in front of a car or get hurt. I'm never, I'm never afraid he will hurt me or, or hurt anyone else. Uh, I, I'm afraid he may endanger himself. And indeed, some of Tourette sometimes is a sort of playing with danger and boundaries. I, um, I know people with, um, with, with Tourette's who, 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 from the impulse to put the finger in machines and so forth, have lost the tips, tips of their fingers. I, um, I, I fear for the force of impulse uh, in Shane sometimes. <coughs> fill me with my car, fill me with my car. Big shark car. See, when you touch somebody's car, it's a no-no in this culture, you know, and you can, you can slap somebody's face sooner than you can touch their car, you know? Shane's compulsion to touch extends beyond it's things to people. It is, it is. It's, this could be risky. Boundaries are sometimes transgressed, and this can get him into trouble. Uh, here, look, there's a local This human here. touching involves not just the fingers, but the breath. What's the, what, what, uh, okay, uh, now, now that's an impulse. Yes. Um, what goes on internally? <sighs> well, digestive gases. Come, uh. <laughs> what goes on is, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know how to say it. It's like, a, it's a, uh, well, it's an invisible. I mean, you can't see my breath, but then suddenly it, 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 it touching you without my fingers. It's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a touching mm -hmm. without, without uh, touching. You know, I mean, I don't physically touch you, but I touch you, you know, with, with air. Is know. the touching also a form of investigation? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. At its, at its best, at its highest, at its highest, it's a form of investigation. And it could be also an emotional, not just a physical investigation. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's, you know, investigate, you know, I mean, what, how are they going to react? Or I'm used to the react, and if they're going to get scared, it's like, you reach the limit. If, I'm, if I dare um, to touch somebody where yeah. you, you know, I mean, a lot of people um, in this culture won't be touched. But, but, but it also it. seems to me that sometimes you not only know the sight and sound of everything around you, but you know the feel and the touch of it. Yeah. See this bush? Look. Or primitive? Look. Or... See this bush here? See this bush? Look. 
see that? Yeah. They get all over my hands, right? And I like the sound of it. I like the crackling sound of it. And I like the color of it. I like the color, that gray-brown color, you know? And it, it, looks, it looks in some way sexual. If I were to lie on it, I'd get all this all over my body and it excites me, you know? And I, when I touch things, you know, cold and hot and hard and soft and uh, slippery and, and rough, you know, or, or, or sticky, slippery or sticky or... <laughs> Now, 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 what's that about? Well, it makes me laugh. You know, what, what Many you people with Tourette's a, take I'm Haldol and other drugs to moderate the more extreme symptoms of their condition. Shane takes no medication at all, preferring the full force of his condition, with all its disadvantages, to the damp down state induced by drugs. Shane has found a powerful alternative to drugs in karate, at which he excels. Apart from offering him a form of self-defense, in the difficult public situations he sometimes faces, it enables him to gain some control over his Tourette's. My movements, my tics, the involuntary become voluntary. One doesn't have time to think. You think instantly, the moment the moment, sudden, it's all sudden. You've noted this, right? How I've integrated my Tourette and my karate. You have ticks in there, they're karate ticks, you know. <laughs> These ticks, you know. The, uh, but you know, the, I, I, could, I could use, I could take advantage of my Tourette and I could, I could integrate it into the fully concentrated technique. And that became really something to reckon with, you know. Shane's speed and suddenness and spontaneity can all here be channeled in a very creative way. It's very fascinating to see the juxtaposition of something like Tourette's with a highly skilled, organized, graceful activity like the karate. There's often a, a surge of, of almost formless feeling which goes with various ticks. Um, here in this, in this gladiatorial contest, you see the raw energy, the explosiveness of the Tourette's, but it becomes organized and, and, uh, and directed and focused. Occasionally, this holding together broke, and there'd be a sudden touching of the ground or a twirling or something, and these are little escapes of the turrets, or little returns to raw turrets. He sometimes speaks of, um, of the turrets as a, a force which can ride him unless he rides it. And uh, again, uh, I think the turrets sort of is, um, is serving Shane and not bullying him. I can often become, for a time, more uh, composed or more relaxed. You know, I give in the ticks an opportunity to, uh, you know, show themselves or unmask themselves. I've given uh, sort of uh, freedom to them. Although karate offers Shane respite from his Tourette's, it does not cure it. Frankenstein! It's alive! It's alive! And in public situations, his Tourette frequently